get inside. Take a look at this pitch. It is on the inside corner. It doesn't have any run. And Johnson just rotates, gets the hands extended, and just drives this ball out of the park. Look at the location again, right over the white part of the plate. You got to bend that ball a little bit more. Johnson takes it yard. Cats grab the early lead. Despite their struggles last week, they were hitting the ball out of the park at a one of the best clips, actually the best clip in school history. Seven home runs last weekend, and they start off here with another one. Katie Reed, the senior shortstop from St. Louis, preseason, all SEC selection. Reed goes small ball, safe at first. How about that, a home run and a bunt to open up the day. Katie Reed knows how to play the game. She is smart. In fact, SEC Academic Player of the Year last year, so she's going to read the defense. She sees immediately everybody's back. A dinger has just given up. She lays that ball down. Perfect zone. Elam, the freshman, coming out from behind the dish, just not in time. The corners have to crash that a little bit better for Oklahoma if they want to try to get out speedy runners. And now one of the top power hitters in Kentucky history, Abby Cheek. Senior from Inman, South Carolina. Second in home runs, runs batted in, slugging percentage in her career. She's already drawn eight walks, so you know opposing pitchers very selective with what they throw to Abby. And much respect to her game. And our first look at their new pitching coach this year as Jen Rocha who won a couple of national championships as a Florida assistant, now back here in Oklahoma where she once played for Patty Gasso. Talk about a lot of the coaching moves at the head coaching position, but this was a big pickup for Patty Gasso. When Melissa Lombardi went up to Oregon, opened up that pitching position. I'm sure right now that coach is just talking to Lopez and saying, hey, look, we got to locate. Just work on focusing on getting your pitches. Put the ball on the ground. We've got that very solid defense behind Mariah, uh, Mariah Lopez. There's Rocha, who uh, head coach Patty Gasso gives a lot of leeway to. There's a lot of trust. There's a lot of respect there. And, and there's a, a ton of turnover yes. in this pitching staff that Rocha is dealing with this year with the graduations of Paige Parker and Paige Lowry, who together won a national championship for Oklahoma a couple years ago. Well, Patty said last night that Mariah Lopez is ready to go. She has sat and watched the pages for the last two years. She's learned a lot. She is ready to be in that circle. Catches the outside corner, three and one. Abby Cheek taking all the way. Rachel liked the plate discipline that Abby showed last week, hoping that it will continue throughout the season, which could make her one of the most feared hitters in the game. It's ball four, they'll throw down anyway. So two on with nobody out, already up one nothing. Let's check in with Holly Rowe. Well, we just covered a game where the Texas pitcher, Miranda okay, Ellis, who has been in the Women's College World Series, said that early in that game, she was nervous. She said, I was throwing too tentative. I felt the nerves. This is a packed stadium. It is February. Teams are not <laughs> used to pitching in front of a crowd like this on national TV. I definitely feel that the pitchers in this circle, a little tense, a little nervous. 16 teams here, Holly. 11 of them in the top 25 this week. So a major step up in the competition on the gravity of the situation. Television, February, first time for our sport. It's got a postseason feel to it. You almost feel like, oh my gosh, here's this is the Women's College World Series in February. Alex Martin had a good, uh, good opening weekend that included a home run against Houston. Martin's the junior from McHenry, Illinois. She's probably going to see a lot of pitches batting behind Cheek in the lineup. This is one of the tweaks that Rachel Lawson has already made. Well, she said, quite frankly, she thinks that Alex Martin has 
one of the best, if not the best, swing on the team and loves hitting her behind cheek. 0-2 from Lopez. Got her to reach. One down. Nice rise ball on the outside corner. Lopez is going to get a little wiggle. Look at the way she locates it. All about putting the ball in the corner. A little bit of cut out as it's rising up, and that's what you want. You can see the way Martins is going to chase that pitch out of the zone. Number five hitter here is Jenny Shaper, senior from St. Louis. It's a very experienced Kentucky team. That played in a Super Regional last year, lost to Oregon. They got seven starters coming back. Um, one game, one of that Super mm -hmm. Regional in Eugene. Inside the Shaper, one and one. Lopez in the mid to high 60s in the circle. Now you see Rachel Lawson now in her 12th season, the winningest coach in Kentucky history. Has a nice new contract extension through 2023. Shaper, hot shot to Sid Romero, steps on the bag over to first double play. Lauren Johnson pitch on the inside corner, drives it out of the yard. Wildcats on top, but the Sooners pick it up the bats. Lauren Johnson with the solo home run to lead off the ball game. Kentucky with the one nothing lead as we head to the bottom of the first. And Grace Ballman in the circle. She led Kentucky with 14 wins a year ago. And the sophomore from Hardin, Illinois will get the call after a solid freshman campaign a year ago and here is the starting lineup brought to you by St. Pete Clearwater for your four-time national champion Oklahoma Sooners and a group of seniors that has two titles and looking for a third Callie Clifton the senior from Wayne Oklahoma now in the starting lineup for the fourth year in a row there's four seniors in the lineup occupying four of the top five spots. Putting the pressure on early, and that's one thing about this Oklahoma lineup. Over the last couple years, their success in the circle, obviously really good arms, but the ability to put big runs up on the board, take the pressure off the defense and the pitchers, has been a recipe that has come out of that yep. oven in a very nice shape of a national championship or two. And, Michelle, it's a... It's a team and, a, and probably a philosophy since it's worked quite well. They don't mess around with the lefty slappers at the top of the lineup. They got three righties right out of the gate for Patty Gasso. It usually can field a fearsome lineup in that batter's box. Hall of Fame head coach, four titles over 1,200 wins. And they have owned the Big 12. It got a little bit tougher this year with the addition of Mike White at Texas and an improved Oklahoma State team. Along with Oklahoma and Baylor, that conference should be a lot of fun to watch. We'll have a bunch of those games for you on our ESPN coverage, which is over 1,200 games this year. 3-2 from Ballman. And the leadoff walk for Clifton. Here's the scouting report on Grace. Ballman is going to throw the ball in the high to mid 60s. She likes to throw a drop curve rise combo. She'll throw all three of those pitches in any situation. And, and really that go-to pitch will change depending on the day. She'll stay down in the zone. What was interesting is earlier this year, last weekend, five home runs given up. All of last year she gave up just nine. So she's got to keep the ball in the park. You mostly do that by keeping the ball down in the zone, which she worked against Clifton, but she issued that walk. And a big challenge right here, Jocelyn Allo, who hit 30 home runs a year ago in a freshman campaign that saw her claim first-team All-America honors. From Haula, Hawaii, there is a calmness, a chill about her that her coach and this entire lineup sort of feed off of to keep them relaxed and knowing certainly Smitty that with one swing of the bat she can change things dramatically. Yeah, 
early in the season? You're checking your cards. You're making sure you're seeing things properly. You're, you're all on the same cheat sheet that so many of the teams use now on the wristbands so that uh, opponents can't steal the signs. And Olo just a sophomore, but I love the fact she doesn't know the signs of 2-0 count instead of guessing and thinking, well, maybe that was a hit and run. She calls timeout and goes down and asks coach. Well, those are smart decisions for young players. Mm, quickly, could be some activity in the Kentucky bullpen. That's in for a strike. Allo taking all the way, 3-1. That was Tatum Spangler who went down to the bullpen. Bauman needs to come out and continues that pitch. That pitch was off speed, took a little bit off of it. Keep the ball low in the zone, off speed. Infield pop up and drifting over into foul territory to make the catch is Mallory Payton, one down. A big get there for Kentucky. Way to work herself back into that after being down 3-0 and to a power hitter. Picking up that big out. The other. Sydney Romero now stepping in, the senior from San Diego. Thought about the bunt. All-American last year really was a force to be reckoned with at the plate. And one of the great things about Sydney is with all the, the numbers that she's put up, it's the small number that is so meaningful. She hardly ever strikes out. She's always going to put the ball in play, make something happen for you. She can hit to all fields. She has power. She'll drop a bunt. She's smart. She'll try to move the defense by what she's doing in the box. Hence, first pitch, showing a little bit of a sneaky bunt. Try to pull the corners in. What that does is it opens up the 5-6 hole. Holly? Well, this is kind of neat. So Sierra Romero, who played at Michigan, is actually here coaching for Michigan or for Ohio. Excuse me, for Oregon. She's over in the batting cages right now with the Oregon Ducks. And uh, Sydney here at the plate, her mom said, as soon as they get done at the batting cage, she might pop over here and take a look at her sister playing. <laughs> There's one deep back to the track and right. And at the wall, making the catch is Lauren Johnson. Tagging up is Clifton the second. So with two outs, a runner in scoring position. And Romero put a scare into that one, but it stays in the yard. Romero, just a lot of power. This Oklahoma team will challenge you. Take the ball to the track. Fale of you in the four spot. Another one of this senior class. You've got four of them in the first five hitters in the lineup. Review the senior from Oceanside, California, has really worked on her conditioning in the offseason with Shea Knighton on deck. The hero of the national championship from two years ago. They've, they've been through a lot together, this group, and they are the winningest bunch in the country over the last four years. I'll review with that split grip, trying to get on top of the ball. You know, Beth, you talk about these seniors and how much they've done for this program, but it's their worth e work ethic as well. You know, Romero steps in the bucket and almost drives the ball out of the yard opposite field. Mm -hmm. That comes from strength, conditioning. They continue to work hard. They don't rest on their laurels, the two national championships. Got a chance to tie the ball game right here and a slow roller to first. Peyton will gobble that up. And there's one stranded for Oklahoma. Kentucky with the early lead on a gorgeous day by the bay. Well, when you talk about the seniors of Oklahoma, put this in perspective. They have only lost the last game of their season once in their career, winning a national championship as freshman and sophomore. Last year, they had to leave Oklahoma City with a loss. They only made it to the quarterfinals, and Patty Gasso told us, boy, they felt that. It hurt. They didn't like it. They are trying to make this season the next one where they don't end with a loss when they walk off the field. 
Yeah, it was uh, it, it was actually strange to see uh, that at Oklahoma they they lost the opener to Washington and then came back to beat Arizona State and to um, eliminate Florida before falling again to Washington in the national semifinals and with Kehlani Ricketts looking on. So many of these players love coming back and being a part of this program. What was interesting with Patty Gasso told us as well is that after they were bumped from the World Series, they were watching Florida State and how much fun they were having and mm. how they were just in the groove. And they were like, hey, that's how we were our freshman and sophomore year, that senior yeah. class. They visibly could see it and realized they weren't there last year. They, they felt the gravity of the situation. and. 57 and 5 undefeated in the conference and the 12th Women's College World Series appearance. They've got three titles in the last seven years. You could certainly talk about that being a dynasty. Yep. Um, and then the other half of that coin is that parity has also arrived in college softball with Florida State winning it all last year. Seven different national champs in the last 10 years. Oh, and by the way, we'll have uh, Oklahoma, Florida State tomorrow. <laughs> Here it goes, Smitty. I'm fouled out of play. I'm, on top of I'm my so impressed. You, you are just, <laughs> the flow right into the next promo is spectacular. <laughs> Got well. that matchup for you tomorrow afternoon on the U at 1 o'clock Eastern, Oklahoma and Florida State, winners of the last three trophies. Well, that's a big part of this event. You know, that's why ESPN Events first owned and operated women's event for ESPN. There's a lot of pride that's going into this, a lot of great community service. Good eye by Mallory Payton, 6-7-8 in the lineup here. Payton, the sophomore, first year in the starting lineup. And the strikeout for Lopez. That's the second for Mariah, one down. Lopez with that curveball. You just can tell the way she's bending this. The body lean, the snap. Getting that ball on the outside corner. Peyton just swinging through it. So she's worked for two years with Missy Lombardi. And then Missy moves on to take the Oregon head coaching job. And now she's working with Jen Rocha. She... She's got Kehlani Ricketts whispering in her ear. She's got Delaney Gorley, who is another grad assistant. Of course, played for Jen Rocha and Tim Walton at Florida. It's it's a one heck of a dugout over there with all the the amazing pitching minds. Pop up to short Grace Lyons, who took over for Kelsey Arnold this year. Oh, Two and, down. And, and lefties, they're all lefties. Every national championship that Patty Gasso has won has been with a lefty in the circle. So in the two you just named off, some of the, the best oh. lefties uh, in NCAA history, and Gorley and Ricketts. And those young kids can absorb. They can yes. be a sponge and just and of course, soak it all up. Lopez coming from the right side, but they did add the left-hander in G. Juarez, the big All-America transfer from Arizona State as uh, well as another righty Shannon Sale. So they've restocked the pond. Here's Bailey Vick in the eighth spot in the lineup. Another split gripper. There's G. 26 and six last year, helping the Sun Devils get to the World Series. You'll be hearing us talk all weekend long about all the significant transfers around the softball world this year. Basically, the, the change, you used to have to ask for permission to leave. Now, you can enter the transfer portal simply by saying, I am going to leave. It's kind of like being a free yeah. agent for three mm -hmm. weeks. See who has openings, scholarship money for you. Straight back by Vic. Bailey, the junior from Paducah, Kentucky, a 
350 hitter last year with some speed on the base pass. Wildcats were in the World Series back in 2014. This is a pretty strong lineup they've got this year. Knocking on that door to try and get back recently. I don't think it's going to be managing expectations for the Wildcats. They had that great season last year. They returned seven of the nine starters from that super regional. They went up to Eugene, and even though they're picked middle of the pack in the SEC, this is a team that can do a lot of damage, but they've got to be able to pitch well in the circle. It was a little bit of an Achilles heel last weekend. Vic waits on it, drives that one out to left center, and tracking it down is Nicole Mendez. The Lauren Johnson home run, still the difference. You can St. Pete Clearwater Elite Invitational, presented by Wilson, is brought to you by Visit St. Pete Clearwater, home to America's best beaches. And Wilson, the official glove of national champions and Olympians. There's Michelle's house, I think, right? Second from the right there on the intercoastal. Uh, great shots from around. St. Pete and Clearwater here at the Elite Invitational, presented by Wilson. Oh, that was actually a Paso Girl. Oh, Paso, I'm Paso Girl down there on the Intercoastal, but you were <laughs> spot on there, Bimo. <laughs> this is a young lady right here that a lot of folks in America are hoping that she can stay healthy throughout the season because when her knees hold up, she is one of the sweetest swings in the game. Hampered by... Her knees last year, she may be limited to more of a designated player role this year. But of course, she was the hero a couple seasons ago of their national championship in the big 17 inning win. Well, and, and Beth, one of the things that you rarely see in baseball or softball are, are hitters using sneakers instead of cleats or spikes. It's just so hard to really get any momentum. You know, we, we really gain our power from our feet off of the ground, and she's just using a regular pair of sneakers just because she's had those knee problems. Knighton reached down for it, and back into left center, and coming over to make the catch is Sarah Rainwater. One down. Let's take you back to that 17 inning affair when she was the most outstanding player and the home run that proved to be the game winner against the Gators in game one of the Champ Series. And what a moment that was for Shea and the Sooners. You mentioned it. Sweet swing, pitches on the inside corner. You can't hide from her, and, and that's the way a lot of this Oklahoma lineup is. They will turn on the inside pitch. They'll go with the outside pitch. They stay in their legs on off speeds. Grace Green, the freshman, rips it right out to center, and right there to get it is Rainwater again. Two down. This ball just tattooed right back up the middle. But Rainwater, great beat on it immediately. No hesitation out in center field. Tracks that down. That's a senior out there in center field. That's going to please Rachel Lawson. Who said after last weekend, uh, we have it in us to shore up our defense. Going to make some plays. You know, we're going to find out an awful lot about the Cats who come in at two and three. They have four ranked opponents this weekend that they'll be playing again. So they could come out of here sub 500, Smitty, or they could come out already with a pretty good resume moving forward if they can knock off a couple. We talked about their schedule last year. They had the number one strength of schedule in the entire NCAA last year. This year, their SEC schedule is not quite as hard. So Rachel Lawson decided, hey, I'm gonna schedule pretty tough in this preseason, this pre-conference season, and, and really test this team out. Oklahoma, Texas, Oregon, and James Madison. They also will face UCLA and Washington in the non-conference. They do not have Florida, Tennessee, or Georgia, so there is a chance to make some hay in the conference. 
Rio to Mendez, and she draws the two-out walk. Holly? Well, you're talking about Kentucky's schedule and how hard they scheduled because they knew their RPI would suffer a little later because their SEC schedule is not as difficult. And Rachel Lawson said the biggest challenge to that, though, is they have 11 freshmen. And so she wants a tough preseason. She wants a tough non-conference. But she also doesn't want those young players to lose their confidence. So it is important for them to come out there at 1-0 lead right now in Oklahoma. But she wants these youngsters to be learning and improving, but also keep their confidence in this very difficult schedule. A couple of young pitchers on the staff. Ballman, as good as she was as a freshman, now a sophomore. People know her. They know to ex what to expect. You know, that's the major thing about being a pitcher is that you've got to be a chameleon. You've got to change every year. If you're stagnant and you stay the same, you're going to be predictable. People are going to hit you. It's in for a strike from Grace. Warley one. Lindsay Elam, the new catcher who took over for Leah Wodak this year. Expectation is she'll be a little bit better at the plate, as good as Leah was defensively. They're hoping Elam can provide a little more pop. Played in 16 games last year. Healthy cut at that at 64 miles an hour, two and two. Slow row to short, bobbled, and everybody's going to be safe. Mendez flying around to third. Runners on the corners with two outs. And the error on Katie Reed at short. Well, and that's something you don't see very often. Katie Reed typically very sure gloved in that shortstop position, but the ball had a lot of English on it. Look at the way it's going to hop up. You can see the spin on it. It's miss hit, and she just brings her head up a little bit. And this is. Early in the season, mistakes. It's not staying through the ball, not keeping your head down. Mendez with a little bit of hesitation coming around second base, but still able to make it over to third, so. Oh, and a missed opportunity, yeah. Michelle, to get out of the inning, and that will bring up the number nine hitter, Grace Lyons. In the five games last weekend for Oklahoma, she drove in four runs. And another opportunity here for the Sooners to tie it up. Well, and I'm sure Coach Lawson going out and saying, look, number nine hitter, you've got the seniors coming up. If you turn over the, the lineup for Oklahoma, this is the out. You go right out, or you don't even worry about who's on base. You go right at this hitter. Clifton in the top of the order, right behind the freshman from Peoria, Arizona. Ballman coming right up at the letters, 0-1. to score in the first with Callie Clifton in scoring position. Couldn't get her home. Two and one. Oh, and that's the pitch as a young pitcher that you have to hit. You get ahead with the strike. You come back with the rise ball a little bit more out of the zone. You don't get the batter to bite. You go to the outside corner. You've got to make that pitch. You've got to be in control. Caught at third. Abby Cheek right there. Two complete. And Kentucky with the lead over Oklahoma. Welcome back to the 2019 St. Pete Clearwater Elite Invitational presented by Wilson. Michelle Smith out there on the catamaran, enjoying a lovely day <laughs> out on the bay. Glad you are with us. It is opening day of ESPN's college softball season with over 1,200 games coming your way on the road to the Women's College World Series. 
Beth Mullins, Michelle Smith, Holly Rowe. We're excited to have you with us. Tiffany Green and Amanda Scarborough on the call of the games earlier. LSU beat Oklahoma State and Texas run ruled Cal. A couple of good storylines there. Can LSU continue to hit? That's always been an issue when they've gotten to the World Series. They've always had outstanding pitching. And of course, Texas under new head coach Mike White and the four Oregon transfers said all looked good today. Shannon Rhodes a home run. Miranda Ellis with the win. And Kayla Kowalik grounds out one down as the top of the order will come up here for Kentucky. There you go. Shelby Sinceri, another home run for LSU. She also picked up a save. Shelby Wickersham got the win, and then Ellis pitched a shutout, and Shannon Rhodes, a two-run home run for Texas. Still to come on ESPN3 later, Oklahoma and the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame. And we are just getting started. Chock full of games all day Friday, all day Saturday, and will culminate on a primetime Sunday night game on ESPN2 with defending champion Florida State taking on Tennessee, one of the favorites in the SEC this year. Good off speed from Lopez. Bottom drops out of that pitch, so it's off speed and also has that downward movement. Mix that in with that explosive rise ball, a fastball, and a curveball that she runs. She's hitting all those quadrants, settling down after that first inning home run she gave up. To this batter right here, Lauren Johnson. Yanked one over the right field fence. Two and two, just away. I'll take you back to that home run swing. That's a pitch on the inside corner, and it just stays on the white of the plate. Johnson just gets extended, rotates on it, and pops it out. This at bat, Johnson has seen nothing on the inside no. corner. <laughs> it's been nothing but outside and off speed. Out to throw down to record the out. Third strikeout for Lopez. Two down. Oh, and that's the difference. She locates the pitch at a different speed and a different location. Look at the off speed. Look at the way it's going to rotate out of her hand in the opposite direction. It's a flip changeup. And Johnson just way out in front. That ball diving down into the dirt. Good job behind the dish by the freshman Elam to, excuse me, sophomore Elam to pick that up and get it down the line. Elam got it. Easy work made of Katie Reed as Lopez has settled down nicely. One nothing Kentucky, top of the order, coming around. For Welcome back to uh, Clearwater and the Eddie Seymour Complex. That youngster getting in a little extra work. We head to the bottom of the third and the top of the order for the Sooners who trail one to nothing. Oklahoma opened up last weekend 5-0. Find themselves behind here. Grace Ballman, second time around, though, that they'll have a, a look at Grace. Clifton walked her first time up, got into scoring position, and was left on base. Two in scoring position through the first couple of innings for the Sooners. And Michelle, this is one of the more feared stretches, I think, uh, of any lineup in the country when you go Clifton, Allo, Romero, Avu, Knighton. <laughs> Holy cow. <laughs> Pick your poison. It is. It's about locating it, working from ahead. And when you're in that circle, you just have to focus on that one pitch at a time. Clifton. Off the fence. Um, the right field line. Patty Gasso likes to call her the, if there was a model player at Oklahoma, it would be the senior they call CeCe. 
A huge Sooner fan growing up out of Wayne, Oklahoma. And a fabulous ambassador of this program. Stepped on the field as a freshman mm -hmm. and didn't know if she belonged. Yeah. And coach had to tell her, look, you are here for a reason. You're good. We didn't bring you here for nothing. <laughs> And look what she's done. I mean, she knows how to get on base. Those first two stats, your ability to take gifts from the pitcher. And then once she's on base, she knows how to move to the second base. One, two from Ballman. Drives that one back to the track and right. And spinning the defender around. Johnson lost it. Clifton motoring around to third. And the leadoff triple for the Sooners. Location of the pitch just does not get in enough. It's supposed to be on the inside corner, and CeCe just drives it the opposite way. And look at the outfielder, Lauren Johnson, the way she goes back in the opposite direction. But you can see the flag. The wind is going to be blowing that ball back toward the line. So misplayed a little bit. And with the wind helping push that ball back away from her, so important to work on your footwork. Jocelyn Allo with three titles in seven years and one of the favorites to get right back there to fight for another one this year. pitch at 52 miles an hour from Ballman. I think that's the pitch she needs to use more often against a very aggressive lineup like Oklahoma. Use that pitch on the corners and then velocity after you're ahead. So now she's working from ahead 0-2. At other times she's fallen behind. She gave up that home run to Romero on an 0-1 pitch. All the scoring via the long ball here. Warren Johnson, the solo shot. Sid Romero, the three-run dinger. Pulled foul. Sooners, the preseason favorites for an eighth consecutive Big 12 title with Texas, Baylor, and Oklahoma State right on their heels. There's a base hit, could be extras. Grace Green to second, and she'll slide in safely with a two-out double for OU. Talked about the points, pitching from ahead, this pitch 0-2, oh and, and it just is not where it needs to be located when you're that far ahead. But Green, she mashes this. Weight on that back leg allows the ball to travel deep into the zone and just crushes it the opposite way. These young kids from Oklahoma know how to swing it. And hey, when you have a senior class that swings it like they do, you just watch them and be like, I want to be like you. She is a tall, lanky youngster. And we yeah. saw right there, she can get, she can cover a lot of ground with her bat. Reaches out for the double. And in scoring position for Nicole Mendez, the junior from Houston. 300 hit her a year ago. Pops it up out under the grass and right. And Martins is back for it. Side retired. One left on, but not before the Sooners grab the lead. We'll hear from Kentucky head coach Rachel Lawson on the other side as the Sooners Go on top with Sydney Romero going deep.
eight straight. And now we'll face the heart of the order and the dangerous Abby Cheek who walked back in the first. Cheek and Martin's up for Kentucky. So this is what coach was just talking about. She wants a couple of hitters to string it back together. Get this Wildcat team back in the game. Ooh, there's a look at that monstrous swat. Which leads me to believe, Smitty, that it will be sooner rather than later before she catches Brittany Cervantes. <laughs> Six home runs to career number one. Nine ribbies to career number one in Kentucky history. It's always been a force every time she swings the bat. Another one of those athletes that is engaged every single pitch, and that's why the results are outstanding day in and day out throughout your career. Nibbles on the outside corner, two and two. Quality pitch by Lopez. She doesn't get it. She goes back to the same spot twice. First time, little bit low. It's a ball. Comes right back there. Makes the adjustment. Brings it up two inches. Gets the call strike. Wants to talk it over with Lindsey Elam. Lopez, the understudy of Paige Parker and Paige Lowry the last couple of seasons. She actually was the winner of game two of the championship series in that 2017 championship campaign. And now to start out this new season, you'd have to consider her the ace of the staff right now, although they do have tremendous depth with G. Juarez and Shannon Sale and possibly even Nicole Mendez in the a little bit of a middle reliever role here early in the year. She chops it to second, and that gobbles up Clifton. And Abby safe at first to lead off the fourth. Well, three of the top five teams in college basketball are coming your way on ESPN Saturday night. First up at 6 Eastern, number two Duke, fresh off that 23-point comeback against Louisville. They'll take on NC State. And then at 8 Eastern, number one Tennessee winners of 19 in a row taking on the Kentucky Wildcats who were stunned at home by LSU this week. It's all a part of the Sonic Blockbuster on Saturday. Romero bobbles, throws to first, not in time. <laughs> That's not something that you expect. We talk about Cheek and Martins, their ability to hit the ball, both hitting over 400. And then the Sooners come out and make two consecutive errors back to back. Kentucky trying to get something going. So now they've got the tying run on base, the go ahead coming up. Not in time to get Martins over at first. They're going to get a pinch runner on. It's four errors coming into today. Two here this afternoon in this game. That's J.C. Babs over there to run for Martins, who can re-enter. And it's the number five hitter, Jenny Shaper. And that will get foul out of play behind the dugout. So a couple of errors in the inning. Oklahoma had four in their first five games last weekend. Shaper hit into a double play back in the first. Now, Oklahoma continuing to go right underneath of her hands, trying to get her to do the same exact thing. A double play was a Hard hit ground ball to Romero. She stepped on third, threw over to first. Similar situation. Oh, 
And that's the pitch that actually Schaefer needs to go after. And you're this situation, you're thinking right side. I want to hit the ball to the right side, not the left side, because I am a double play potential if I go left side. That pitch on the middle outer corner, that's what you need to be looking for to drive the ball through that 3-4 hole. 1-2 from Lopez. Goes opposite and out to right field. Catches made. Cheek will tag and head the third. That's Reagan Rogers, who's now out in right field making the catch. That'll bring up Mallory Payton. Runner goes to throw down the tag and out at second is Babs. Thrown out by Elam. Two down. I don't know that I like that particular play when you don't have a threat at third base to steal no. back home. So Cheek is not going to go anywhere, so Oklahoma is going to throw through. There's no question. They're not even attempting to cut. You can see the way that Lyons comes across, makes the tag. Clifton isn't anywhere close. Typically, a first and third situation, when you're worried about that runner at third, you'd be bringing a cut across. There's no cut in sight. That just shows that Oklahoma is like, hey, we're going straight down. Runner at third doesn't have the potential to come home. You could have had the pinch runner over at third base there as well. Terrific throw right on the money from Elam. Tag applied by Lions. Three O to Peyton. Lopez now trying to pick up her teammates and cover up the two errors earlier in the inning. Cheek who reached on an error down at third base. And the tying run at the plate in Mallory Payton. Romero just inside the line. The throw over to first. A collision at the bag. And Green was able to hold on for the third out. Oklahoma gets out of it and a 3-1 lead. Romero fires over to first. Sooners on top. And we'll chat with Patty Gasso when we come back. Welcome back to Clearwater. We are here with Oklahoma coach Patty Gasso. Sorry, I was a little late getting out of here, sorry. Of course. <laughs> Coach uh, Mariah Lopez, she gives up the home run her first bat at bat, and she pulls herself together. How did she do that? Mm, I, she's a veteran, although she hasn't really been on the mound a ton for us, she knows how to do it. So I'm really proud of her, and she's getting out of some big innings. I know defense is your pride and joy. Mm -hmm. Tell me what you're seeing with your defense right now. <laughs> a little bit shaky, but... What we, what we just talked about, I mean, literally, is we made a couple flubs, but our catcher gets us out of it. Our first baseman gets us out of it. Gets us out of it. So it's going to happen. We just got to keep counting on each other to pick each other up. So we're good. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for having us here. This is inaugural, and it is great, and we're absolutely honored to be here. Well, thank thank you. you. Thanks. Thank you, Patty and Holly here at the St. Pete Clearwater Elite Invitational presented by Wilson. Owned and operated by ESPN, the first venture into hosting a softball tournament. Kudos to everybody involved and all the folks here in the St. Pete Clearwater area for taking great care of us. This is opening day of our ESPN softball coverage. 
on the road to the Women's College World Series. Yeah, there have been a lot of people working long, long days. City of Clearwater Parks and Rec, Mike Lockwood, Kevin Dunbar, you know, ESPN Events, the county of Pinellas County has really been a, a big asset. Tim Ramsberger and just, you know, his whole crew, it's just been a, it's just been a lot of fun, a lot of work. <laughs> Meg Aronowitz on the uh, production mm -hmm. side. And then, of course, we get uh, all of our ESPN friends here get to show up in town and put on this lovely event. Good to see everybody. <laughs> well, it speaks to the continued growth of this sport. And uh, a lot of our friends in the media covering the story that uh, came out from the Department of Education that says softball is now a revenue generating sport in college athletics. And the, the ratings certainly bear out the popularity and the growth of this game as Grace Ballman gets the strikeout of Lindsey Elam, 8-9 and then the top of the order here. We got uh, another special guest. This is a big tournament when folks like this show up, Holly Rowe. Um, I mean, we're talking about Tampa royalty right here. This is Florida State <laughs> superstar Jesse Warren. That's right. And Jesse, you're from this area. What brings you back here to this tournament? Well, uh, Florida State is playing in the tournament, and um, just to come out here and watch the good competition. You know, there's some top 10 teams here, and I love softball, and I love watching softball. So just to be able to come out here and watch um, and get the different side of it is, is pretty cool. Okay, so if you remember the last time we saw Jessie Warren, she was making the play from third base that was up for an SB, where she dove in, got the ball out of the out of the bunt off the ground. Oh, we're um, seeing it right now, Holly. Oh, there good, we're seeing there the replay right now. Perfect. That's because our producer Joe Taylor's rock star. Um, but you are going to open up your own facility here in Tampa. How are you going to capitalize on what you brought to the Seminoles for young women here in this area? Yeah. So uh, me, Jessica Burrows, and Gianna De Salvatore are actually opening up a facility here in the Tampa area. It's going to be called the Clubhouse. Um, it should be opening up in the next month. But, um, you know, just being able to give back to young girls and inspire young girls. And um, me growing up, I didn't have that opportunity. Um, so just being able to give back to them is, is really the goal of this whole thing. Okay, so the big question I have about Florida State softball this year is how do they replace you? So how do you think they do it? Yeah, um, I think, you know, they've got a good squad. Um, their lineup is They'll figure it out. Carson Gordon, Callie Harrod, um, two big leaders for that team. Um, and, you know, with Megan King in the um, circle and the new freshman faces, uh, they've been pretty good for the past five games that I've seen. So I think um, the coaching staff is good at figuring things out like that. So I think they got it. All right. That's your national champ, Jesse Warren, just, you know, here at our event. I'm just, like, starstruck. It's super cool. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you, Holly. Always good to see Jesse Warren and, uh, of course, the Seminoles and Lonnie Alameda bringing that uh, first national championship back to Tallahassee. You talk about perseverance, 10 trips That's right. to the World Series before getting it right and bringing it back to the state of Florida. Well, and she talked about the royalty here in this Tampa Clearwater area. There's a lot of great ball players that come out of it. She mentioned Gianna Del Salvador, who had a great career at UCLA. Jessica Burroughs, who was also at Florida State a couple years ago. Uh, Elizabeth Mason, who plays for Florida State, had a couple of big home runs uh, in the championship last year. So Clearwater Bombers, bombers right, have been absolutely. legends here for decades. Herb yeah. Dudley, talk about Eddie Seymour was a manager. Reaching for it and driving it right down the line and almost taking out our cameraman out there beyond the left field fence. Then he's okay and so is Cece with the home run for OU. And this community loves softball. They love the long ball. Cece taking it out. See this pitch on the outside corner. She waits on it, stays in her legs. Look at the way the front foot is down. She stays balanced and gets the barrel to travel through that zone and pick this pitch up. It's an off speed, but she still gets it out of the park. Right, number Oklahoma Bats coming alive these last two innings. A triple and a home run for Callie Clifton at the top of the order. Second home run of the day for the Sooners and a 4-1 lead. Just to wrap up, Jesse Warren, we can, uh, you can see the uh, Seminoles starting tomorrow, 9.30 a.m. on your ESPN app. It'll be Florida State. And uh, 
Then tomorrow afternoon at 1 o'clock, Florida State and this Oklahoma team on ESPNU. That's Florida State, Ohio State tomorrow morning. More activity in the bullpen. Megan Shorman, freshman righty from Missouri. This is Jocelyn Allo at the plate. 0 for 1 with a walk. Her pinch runner scored on the Romero three-run home run in the third inning. Sydney waiting her turn. Getting back to talking about those bombers, Beth. A lot of those young ladies, you know, they grow up in this area dreaming of being able to play on this field with these teams, and, and now it's happening. Another person I've worked a lot with on this uh, event, Sarah Kirschberger, who's from the Visit St. Pete Clearwater side of things. And we always talk about the women's game and you know opportunities to, to build a stadium, something yeah. bigger and better. Always move the sport forward, uh, which it's been doing in the collegiate ranks. Well, and the fans are quite frankly demanding it, right? Yeah, I mean, look at more the and more tickets to be sold. Tickets to be sold, the, the, the revenue factor that's involved now. And the folks that love to watch it on TV, my phone was blowing up this morning uh, on the earlier games when uh, Amanda and Tiffany were calling them and people were like, we have two feet of snow on the ground, but we see <laughs> softball. They're like, we love it. Ballman with the strikeout of Allo. But Oklahoma adds to the lead. Clifton golfs this one down the line and left. And a 4-1 OU lead. Welcome back to the 2019 St. Pete Clearwater Elite Invitational presented by Wilson. Yeah, the Sunshine Skyway connecting Pinellas County down to Manatee County to the south and heading down Bradenton Way. We are in Clearwater right now at the Eddie Seymour Softball Complex. And a 4-1 lead for Oklahoma powered by Sidney Romero and Callie Clifton home runs. Pinch hitter here is Kelsey Henson, seven, eight, and nine in the order due up. for Kentucky, the solo home run to lead off the game from Lauren Johnson. They didn't have a base runner in the second and third innings. They got some assistance with a couple of Oklahoma errors and threatened in the fourth, but then Mariah Lopez shut them down. Just outside the bag. In that big inning for Oklahoma as well. You could tell Coach Lawson when Holly was talking to her was not very happy with the fact that that triple by Kaylee Clifton was not caught out in right field. And she thought that Johnson could have had that. And it's interesting how one play can completely change the dynamic of an inning. And the younger athletes, you know, this is that time of the season that they're learning that. The learning curve is very steep. Right after that was a walk to Allo, so you, you could make the argument that it should have been just a solo home run from Romero, and it would be a 2-1 game right now. Yeah, it's tough to pitch that um, Allo in any situation, but with a runner on third, you're probably going to be a little careful. And then, yes, exactly, Beth, then you have that those three seniors coming up in Romero, Avu, and Knighton. Right now, though, they're trying to solve the riddle that is Mariah Lopez, the reigning Big 12 Pitcher of the Week. And a strikeout there for Mariah. That is her fourth. Well, Lopez is just attacking the entire zone. She's using the screwball away from the lefty. She'll get that ball to dive down, up, and away. 
couple of different directions. She uses the rise ball. She'll throw the curve back underneath your hands as a lefty. So she's just really going right at all of these hitters. Look at the movement and the location on this pitch. So that's a curve ball in the inside corner. It looks like a fastball, and at the end, it just cuts and dives in. Mariah picked up a couple of wins last weekend for the Sooners, beat uh, Syracuse and Charlotte, and spun a couple of one hitters for the Sooners. Laying down the bump, Romero, two down. Romero with a better throw, last inning. Error and then a throw that bled back into the line that Grace Green had to go get. That pitch, excuse me, that throw off that bunt, a little bit cleaner. Kayla Kowalik in the nine spot in the order. You really like to see, too, a player like Mariah Lopez probably could have left and gone somewhere else. She was stuck behind two All-American pitchers, but stayed, wanted to be a part of this program, knew her opportunity would come eventually, and here it is for her in her junior season. Patty Gasso has talked about her confidence, how she has worked hard to prepare for this moment, how she's worked with Kaylani Ricketts, who is... A grad assistant for the Sooners and a member of the U.S. national team, possibly the Olympic team that will be going to Tokyo in two years, who has that national championship game-winning experience herself. Well, Bethany, you brought up a great point with Lopez is that she comes into Oklahoma as a freshman thinking, all right, I'm going to be the number two behind Paige Parker. And then all of a sudden you get the transfer of Paige Lowry. And now you're the number three, maybe the number four. But she hung in there, and, and she's... Now taking the bull by the horn, she's doing a great job leading this staff early in this 19th season. The walk there to bring around the top of the order. She also gives Patty Gasso the luxury of bringing G. Juarez along at her own pace. Of course, G transferring from Arizona State, but just a part of the program for a, a month and a half, just arriving in January. So, And let's not forget that Juarez had hip surgery. Uh, her senior year in high school, and then again when she was at Arizona State. So she's still you know, trying to get back off those and really learn, learn a new format. And she was not very involved with the Sun Devil softball team during the fall. All right, so let's okay, see how okay. Lopez uh, deals with Johnson. She threw her inside, and Johnson took her out of the park. So the second that bat, everything was slow and away as she gets the sign from Jen Rocha. I love it. First pitch, she comes in with the screwball in the outside corner, doesn't get the call, comes right back with the off-speed pitch. That's what was so effective. She struck her out with the off-speed pitch in her second at-bat. I can guarantee you Johnson is going to see everything on the outside corner, low and slow. Johnson skies that one out. To, ooh, right center and almost a collision. Allo able to make the grab. Side is retired. To the bottom of the fifth, the Sooners coming up with a 4-1 lead. Ending Sydney Romero with two on and out of here off the bat of Sid. And that one nothing deficit is gone at a 3-1 Sooner lead. They would add another run to it and we show you that because Sid is set to lead off the inning and she is the offensive MVP brought to you by Wilson with the three-run home run in the third to change things around. They struggled against Grace Ballman in the first couple of innings through the batting order, and then everything changed the second time through, and it was Callie Clifton that got things rolling in the third and another CC run in the fourth with the solo home run. And now Romero, three, four, and five coming up. Fall of view on deck, the grounder to second. Alex Martin's over to first, one down, and Holly with a special Sooner guest.
Did you say Paige Lowry? Because I found her, and um, <laughs> she's actually here watching games. You're watching your Oklahoma Sooners, of course, but why else are you here? It's very special. Yeah, it's My sister is playing for Minnesota, and I get to watch her for the first time in college, so I'm really excited to do that. Rachel Lowry will be playing for Minnesota starting tomorrow. We were just talking about how many pitchers Oklahoma lost. You know these young kids in the bullpen. Tell me what you know about these other pitchers in Mariah Lopez and Parker Conrad that you can tell us about. They have been waiting for their time, and they're ready to go. I think they're really motivated, and they're showing it on the field. I'm just really excited for them. You talk a little bit about you're giving lessons. Now you're the one teaching other people how to pitch. What is something that you would tell these young pitchers to keep in mind in this moment in the circle? I would say just to stay really present, not to put too much emotion into the present or, or the future or the past, but just stay really present in the game and just take as much emotion out of it as possible at the time, but celebrate great things and don't, don't harp on the bad things too much. All right. Whoa. Okay, we've got to go back upstairs because that was a heck of a play right there. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> We got an O from Holly Rowe. Sports center worthy on the Absolutely. snag at first base by Mallory Payton. Two down. And Katie Reed going down at shortstop at well as well. This ball is just tattooed by Folly of View. Look at the way she goes in that five six hole. Long throw back across the infield. And Payton is gonna reach out. Uh, I would never get up if I got into that <laughs> position. <laughs> that that is some flexibility. And I think uh, I think Patty Gasso wants the umpires to make sure that Peyton kept her foot on the base on that fabulous stretch. Scott Mayer, the home plate umpire. Danny Bowman at first. Cameron Ellison at third. Let's see the back foot right here. Well, it definitely goes flat to the ground. It's hard to gauge from that angle. That's a heck of a pickup by the the coach there to uh, I don't think they're going to be able to make that call by from yeah, no. the naked eye right there. They're not going to turn it over. No. But that is close. It's like it's laying up against the side. The heel of it is. Two down for Shea Knighton. Flew out to center in the second inning, grounded to the right side in the third. There's a... Uh, your lineup starting out the day tomorrow, Notre Dame and Tennessee. They're going to be a heck of a fun team to watch. Ball goes that one hit down. Knighton. Looks like it went off the ground and popped up and got her. Patty Gasso will definitely go to a pinch runner right here. Hey, Beth. Um, yes, this is Holly Rowe down on the field. I, I just wanted to see if you could, whoever is in charge of making gifts, um, could we get that split catch at first, a gift by the end of the day? Could we get somebody <laughs> in the truck on that, please? We I'd like to have that on my phone to be able to gift to people. We will yeah. get our social media folks right on that. Okay, thank you. That, just would, that would be a spectacular gift right there. I mean, come be. on. D it up the way Mallory Payton D's this up. Grace Green is the batter. Audrey Lavalley is the pinch runner. Five spot here in the order. We might have to talk about that on the uh, on the seven innings podcast next week. Of course, uh, season two of the podcast is underway, folks. At seven innings podcast. On your uh, on your Twitter and your gram, I believe we'll have uh, some more yeah, fun yes. coming up on Friday night. A little high jinx. Oh. High fly ball in foul territory, and right there under it is Abby Cheek. 
One left on, side retired, five complete, and a 4-1 lead, Oklahoma over Kentucky. The catch, though, playing some D in the stretch. St. Pete Clearwater Elite Invitational, presented by Wilson, is brought to you by Visit St. Pete Clearwater, home to America's best beaches. Some news and notes uh, regarding the start of the new softball season. On our way to the Women's College World Series, seven different champs in the last 10 years. A big story around the softball world, the coaching changes at Oregon and Texas, and all the transfers nationwide. And excited uh, in our travels to see some of the new digs. Texas A&M unveiling a brand new stadium and then major renovations at Hillenbrand and uh, Katie Seashell Presley at Florida. Congrats to uh, the administrations, the athletic departments for stepping up and uh, whew, standing up for all the fans who are going to love watching softball, continuing to watch at those places. Well, in the SEC tournament out at Texas A&M this spring. Can't wait to be fabulous. Hey, Davis Diamond. Davis Diamond. Two, three, and four. Amanda Scarborough, I know, is uh, super excited about that oh, as well. Oh, the fight with Scarborough, there, yeah. She said, you have to see it in person. She said, as beautiful as the pictures are, you've got to see it in person. Reed, out to a view in left, one down. What you got, Holly Rowe? Well, speaking of administration stepping up for softball, Rachel Lawson wanted us to give a shout out to her athletic director, Mitch Barnhart at Kentucky. Every single year she's been at Kentucky, he has given her a contract extension 12 straight times. He has seen what she's done in building this program. They've put a new stadium in down there in Lexington. And she said, you know, shout out to our administrators who have our back and are helping us build this program. And Holly, there's a lot of excitement at uh, UK right now. They have already set a new record for season ticket sales. And next year's recruiting class is a top 10 class. That's the best they've ever had there. And we've got a pitching change for Oklahoma. Mariah Lopez will come out. Whoever comes in is going to have to deal with the dangerous Abby Cheek. And it's Shannon Sale when we come. Shannon Sale is the Land O'Lakes Florida native. Uh, All-conference USA selection last year at Florida International. Then transferring to Oklahoma. And coming on in relief here to face Abby Cheek. Walked in the first, reached on an error in the fourth after Mariah Lopez went five and a third. Four strikeouts and just the two hits, both of those in the first inning. Lopez working herself out of uh, some trouble. A couple of defensive miscues. Nice outing for her. Checking out the uh, pitching stats there with Parker Conrad, and Sale gets Cheek to pop it up. Lions has it, two down. Here's what we can look forward to from Shannon Sale, the righty this year. Uh, Shannon is the hardest thrower on the team. She's gonna be in the ups, upper 60s. She's gonna locate pitches. And one of the things that I loved about Pat Coach Gasso talking about Sale and her entire staff is she's going to be used in relief. She's got that really good ethic. She gets on the on the mound and just wants to dominate. She kind of has that moxie she talks about. And so Patty says, look, I'm going to teach you all that mentality to be a starter, a middle, and a closer. And she does have that closer mentality coming in in relief. She wants the ball. And with that velocity and that location, which should help make her effective. It worked so well a couple years ago. I mean, Holly just talked to Paige Lowry, and when they won the championship a couple years ago, it was often Lowry as the reliever slash closer behind Parker as the starter. They've got the arms to try and do something like that at Oklahoma. So we continue to move more towards the pitching staff. We've come a long way. In the last decade, of course, this is the 10-year anniversary of Washington's win, the national championship behind the dominant arm of Danielle Laurie. Martins pulls that one to the right side and loses the foot race to the bag. And then the side is retired. A pitching change for Oklahoma and still the 4-1 lead. Oh, beautiful sunset over 
Clearwater Beach here at the St. Pete Clearwater Elite Invitational. Beth Bowens, Michelle Smith, Holly Rowe with you tonight. And the four-time national champion Oklahoma Sooners with the lead over Kentucky, four to one, and a pitching change here for the Cats as they will bring in the left-hander Tatum Spangler who makes her debut in the circle right here. And she'll be throwing to a new catcher, Kowalik, who was out in the outfield, will come behind the dish. Seven, eight, nine due up here for the Sooners. All kind of changes for Kentucky when we talked yesterday with Rachel Lawson. She said, hey, one of the things, or a couple of the things you're looking at in February, what's your batting order supposed to look like at the end of the year? But also, what, where, how do we get our best nine on the field and where does that situate them defensively? And that versatility helps. Well, that's what coaches look for nowadays when we do camps and clinics. We talk to young athletes, and they're so set. Now, I'm a second baseman. I'm only a second baseman. And you're like, no, you need to be a middle infielder. <laughs> and then you probably should play some outfield as well. Uh, you know, it's multiple positions will make you a far better asset to your team and to your coach. Just understanding the game from different perspectives. Mendez walked in the second. Popped up in the third. She thought she had drawn the walk. Sooners will turn right around and play Notre Dame. That's coming up next on your app. The walk to Mendez. Fighting Irish probably have the best win so far of the young season. They upset second-ranked Washington last weekend. And speaking of Washington, Gabby Plain in the circle for them. She'll be thrown for Team Australia in the Olympics in mm -hmm. 2020. And got a lot of U.S. Uh, Olympians that are working hard. Let's take a look at that. You got 15 from the Pac-12 and the SEC. It's a roster right now of 18, but they're going to have to cut that yeah. down to 15. And it includes two players still in the college game, Deja Mulipola at Arizona, Rachel Garcia at UCLA. And uh, the, uh, one of the big stories there, the, oh, the two old dinosaurs, the two legends. <laughs> Kat Osterman and Monica Abbott. In my eyes, they're young. They should still be throwing. <laughs> they are dynamite. They've been so good for so long. Great chance for both of them to make the roster. They'll go to Tokyo. In 2020, it's the return of softball to the Olympics. Finally, Danielle Laurie as well, our own uh, yes. ESPN analyst, who will be throwing oh, for Canada. Team Team Canada. <laughs> Aaliyah Flowers is the pinch hitter here for Elam in the eighth spot in the order. And, and actually, this complex is where Team USA has trained a lot over the last couple of years because the head coach of that team is Ken Erickson, who's the head coach of the, the Bulls, the USF oh, Bulls USF. over in Tampa. Possibility, who knows? Maybe we'll see Team USA next year at this uh, at this event. Oh, we would wouldn't love that. to have an international flavor preview. 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 <laughs> Never know what's going to show up here. So, folks, if you're at home next year, you don't want to miss this. You should be here. <laughs> <laughs> Especially if there's two feet of snow on the ground. Yes, where you, <laughs> where you are enjoying the action here, just down the street from America's Best Beaches. And through the right side, the hit and run was on. Mendez all the way around to third, and the pinch hit, base hit for Flores. <laughs> Flores is going to get a pitch on the outside corner. Mendez runs well, so off on the pitch. And I love the fact that it's a pitch on the outside corner. She doesn't drive it too, too much with it. She just takes it and drives it right past Martins, the second baseman. 
And Mendez on the run easily. No hesitation at second. Coming right over to Patty Gasso over at third. Runners on the corners here with nobody out. Grace Lyons in the nine spot. Grace is 0 for 2. A three run home run in the third inning. Sydney Romero, a solo home run in the fourth inning. Callie Clifton. Spangler, the 2-0 pitch. Holly? Oh, I love that Nicole Mendez just came around and slid face first into third base. No fear there. Think about this. In the fall, she was doing a little extra BP throwing for one of her teammates, and a ball came back and hit her on the cheek. She's had facial surgery. They had to go in and fix her cheek. She'll still have to have another surgery after the season to get it looking just right, but... I love that. You get plunked in the face with the ball so hard it breaks your face and you still have no fear coming back. That is a baller. Come on. That is that's the awesome. attitude. That's, right. that's the way they roll. The hunger to win another national championship. That's what makes this sport so special is these young ladies, you know, they work so hard on and off the field and they do anything to continue to win. Very competitive, and it shows. Shows through the broadcast. So a struggle here for Tatum. Spangler coming on in relief. Bottom of the order loads him up for OU. And Clifton has reached all three times she's come up. Another one high and tight. On the chin strap. And Rachel Lawson will call time too to come out to talk with Tatum. to Mendez, the single by Flores, a walk to Lyons to load him up. And again, that mentality as a reliever, when you come in, you've got to be able to locate your pitches. You have to be able to throw with that velocity. And the hitters, their second, third, fourth time through the lineup. Issuing free passes is a recipe for disaster. Mm. Mendez, Flores, Lyons on the bases. <laughs> Kaylee Clifton at the plate. <laughs> Off speed is in for a strike. Two and one. Three and one. Well, those are non competitive pitches. Those pitches are so far out of the zone that CC, there's no way that you're going to fool her. She's going to try to attack that pitch. Might get some freshmen and younger athletes to go after those pitches, but seniors are typically pretty disciplined by this point in their career, especially with the bases loaded. Ball four, and that'll walk in a run. Third free pass of the inning. Five to one Sooners. 
And the eight-run rule is in effect, and Jocelyn Allo can end it with one swing. Doing my math up here, counting, counting people base run. One, two, okay. fingers, one, six, two, six, seven, eight, yet yeah, nine. Pinky, middle Allo would be finger. nine. And the eight-run rule in effect. And a deep breath from Tatum Spangler. Into the dirt. Coming home as Flores and sliding in safely. 6-1. Other runners will move up 60 feet. Wild pitch gets past. Kowalik, new pitcher, new catcher. Allo with two in scoring position. Still nobody out here in the bottom of the sixth. Another one gets away from Kowalik. Another run in for the Sooners. As Lyons scores, Clifton over to third. And things have come apart here for the Cats. opponent's going to score on you. you know, it's one thing if they're bashing it and scoring on their own, but when you're giving it to them, those are the things I'm sure that coach is going to go back and really want to adjust this young Wildcat team. Gets the change in. Two and one. A three-run third inning. Another run in the fourth, and now a three-run sixth inning for OU. Alo doing a good job of refocusing. As a hitter, sometimes it is hard when pitches are not competitive and all of a sudden, you know, they're out of the zone, then all of a sudden there's two in the zone. It's important as a hitter to stay locked in and really focusing on every pitch that's coming at you. Cool count. Again, great patience. Doesn't even bite at a pitch that's a little bit closer to the zone. Sometimes big hitters want to do that. They see that pitch closer to the zone and they'll chase it. The eyes of Allo. Called strike three. Second time she's been caught looking. One down. Well, this is what we're talking about, non-competitive pitches, and then all of a sudden there's one in the zone, and that's a pitch she needs to attack. She can hit that. So a little bit of a surprise that she doesn't go after that. You can see a little bit of uncomfortable the way she walks through the batter's box. Romero, who's got a three-run home run already. Tonight we'll have another opportunity here, 0-1. You know, back to, to Alo, I think what happens on that too, Beth, is that as an athlete you're looking and you're thinking rise ball, rise ball, but the two pitches she was yeah. fooled on were the off speed. We'll try and get the catch. Another at bat in the seventh. Ball A of you, three ground outs today. Swing, 0 and 2 out of the zone. Back up the middle. Romero rounding third, headed for home. The throw to the plate, not in time. And the Sooners. Get the run rule win over Kentucky. And a game winning RBI for five.